slowly but surely we find spiritual significance all throughout the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like when you're eating something and there's something in it. (laughs) You know what I mean? No. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. How y'all doing? I am Spencer Cardia. I am Neo. Neo? Like in the Matrix? No, from Ruby. Ruby? Max and Ruby? You always engage me in my name when it's not supposed to be engaged until we say hi to Frank and so forth. And this here is Frank looking super cash today. It's a beautiful day out. 50 degrees in February. Should we be worried about our grandchildren? Sure. Should we be worried today? No. It's very nice out. He's giving me um, the nautical look that you used to do. Like Nautical I chic. could see he was on a sailboat earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see what you're saying. <laughs> What's going on, guys? How you doing? It is Thursday. If you want your drink, you got to keep it out of frame. <laughs> Otherwise, I will be taking it from you. Okay. How you guys doing? It's a beautiful Thursday. My favorite day of the week. Big news in the sports world. If you're from Philadelphia or care about basketball. Tell me. Ben Simmons was traded to the... Ben Simmons. Yes. Was traded to the Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets that used to be the New Jersey Nets. Sure. You would know more than I with your age. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in return, we get James Harden. I feel like he has something to do with the Kardashians. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds familiar. But yeah, big news. Trade deadline if you care about sports. Higher. But it's gonna be cool. Who will who will Philadelphia um heckle? Probably James Harden. <laughs> give him give it a week. Um but yeah, so that's exciting. I think both teams are happy. Yeah. And that's all that matters, right? Is happiness all around. Yeah. Cool. More than that, if you follow the Olympics, the Russian skater. 15 years old taking the world by storm really yeah great oh really great skater when you say skater the speed figure skater um yeah like ice dancing or figure skating figure skating with the figure eights figure eights Mm -hmm. tested positive for a drug that's not allowed um i didn't expect that part of the story yeah probably steroids or something oh we don't know that well, I mean, it doesn't matter what we know. All we, all I would go as far as to assume is that it's not her fault. Yeah, true. She's, she's 15. True, true, true. She's, Someone gave her something. They're, they're, they're giving her all kinds of supplements and all that. And probably, you know, slipped a little bit in some go-go Slipped her a Mickey, as they say. Slipped her a Mickey. And so it's sad, but it's also, you know, rules are rules. Rules are rules. So... Um, when you said, I said, when you, Ben Simmons and I said, who was Philadelphia going to heckle because he was a huge heckle target and he heckled right back. But, um, uh, my he friend cried right back. He Hold said, boo hoo. I'm not playing for this city. I'm anymore. out of here. Coming to Brooklyn. Um, my friend just showed me, you know how there's, um, stand up comics and they get heckled. Yeah. And there is actually like, uh, a specific, uh comedy just like that the same setup the tiny stage the tiny tables in front where you're encouraged to heckle it's oh. part it's like you know performance art with the audience they get to heckle you and i guess um you can um see how good a comedian would be with answering back my friend thought it was very funny i was very uncomfortable because you're just like saying insults to this person on stage and I oh felt, you went to a show like no, this? no no i saw it on uh, she showed me on the internet yeah i mean my thing is like you know, you don't want to get into a fight with a guy with cauliflower ears. Yeah. Because you know, that means he probably trains to right, fight. Right, right. I think I would be mu- I would be very averse to heckle a comedian who's asking to be heckled. Well, they're all at- they're all signed up for it. I mean, that's the show. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I feel like it's you're sort of setting yourself up. Well, to- I would be happy if I thought he was able to take it. How sad would it be if a person's whole show was try to heckle me and they took it to heart? Can you imagine that? I can imagine. And right. That's why I don't like it. Let's hear. Let's hear the heckles. Your ears are weird. What? Why? Why, why would you say that? <laughs> I don't like it. That actually would be a really funny show. <laughs> See, you're just like her. No, I'm saying I am assuming that these shows are meant for these comedians that are quick off the cuff, ready to heckle back, but with thick skin. Listen, I don't get. I don't get involved in such mm. plebeian. Mm. activities the united nations today um they're recognizing or observing once again world pulses day 
Check your pulses. <laughs> Not that kind of pulses. This kind of pulses. Pulses are like a bean or something. Oh. Yeah, they're this really important. Is... And um, I don't know. They're healthy and they're, I think chickpeas and pigeon peas. Pigeon peas, um, which I know from Trinidad. But this has got to be the most boring holiday. It is the United Nations observance of something that needs to be, I don't know what, education? Yeah, well, it says unexpected ally against climate change. We're not See? getting into that. See, there you go. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, everyone go and, I don't know, plant your pulses. Yeah, you know what? Pulses. You should. If you are a farmer, um, planting pulses in, um, you know how you alternate your land? Yeah. It's important to, on the off years, plant pulses. Plant pulses on the off years. All right, fine. You don't like that day, so we're no. going to have to do umbrella day. It's umbrella day. Oh, now is that an umbrella term for more things? Or is it just about a... <laughs> Umbrellas. It's just, about the, it's just about the bumble shoot. That's what an umbrella is called sometimes. In what world? Lots. No, not this Yes. One. It's called a brawly, I think, in the UK, but a bumble shoot, everybody knows that. If somebody says, oh, it's raining, make sure to grab a bumble shoot, yeah. you'd be like, yeah. I know exactly what you mean mm-hmm. before you looked it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What yeah. is it? Like from like the 50s? I don't know. But, and that is why I was Neo from Ruby. It's an American anime that, um, she has uh, an umbrella that I think there's a knife in it. Now I can't even see where I wrote that. Her weapon of choice is called Hush, an umbrella with a concealed blade. Oh. So. That sucks to die by umbrella. Uh, weapon, uh, umbrella weaponry is, is pretty, um, pretty common and has been around for a very long time. Is this like similar to like the cane weaponry? <laughs> oh, you mean with the hidden stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Well, also just beating someone with an umbrella. No, you can't beat anyone with an umbrella. Old ladies do it. Well, that's like they also you beat you with their handbag. Like I, I think, but I can I can see oh, like James Bond umbrellas. Yeah, I, I feel like in James Bond or it's like a gun. Oh yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I even saw um you know the the more luxury cars they have it in yeah. in the door, which is stupid. How's that stupid? I don't know. You're so I rich. Think... Why do you have to go out in the rain? <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. You just pay for it the rain to stop. Done. Have you ever seen Blue Umbrella? The Disney. I picks? don't think it's dumb at all. I, like, like I often think. I think it's just a, it's just one of them gadgets. Like, oh, we also have this. Yeah. Like, if you have a chauffeur, he's gonna get an umbrella. Like. But but like what I'm saying is, it goes into the door jam. Yeah. It's hidden. Yeah. You only need it when you need it. Like I wish there was more of. I, I wish like it was like go go gadget and your car had a back scratcher. And how many how many of these things, do we not think about until we don't have them? Well, that umbrella that's true. will probably not be used by that rich feller, feller, 364 days out of the year. But the one day where he goes over onto the... the or chick- she. Well, we're talking about rich people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. It could be someone's wife. Um, Spencer. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, and you go to the Chick-fil-A, drive throughs closed. I got to go inside. The Chick-fil-A. The drive through would never be closed. No, I meant this rich guy. <laughs> What's with you and rich people? Do you think they can't have just normal pleasures? No, it's just like you think uh, as soon as you. You like, think that's the best chicken in the in the being available. I think if if, if I was handed a hundred million dollars today, you'd still go to Chick Fil A. I understand that. Yeah, like, but... like well, can you imagine like when you just want some waffle fries? You're like, what five star restaurant sells waffle fries? <laughs> All right. Oh, I want waffle fries. Do you excuse me? Do you have any great coupon? Yeah, you want caviar <laughs> when when you're just like. You woke up on a Sunday and you just... Oh, wait. Sunday. Can't get Chick-fil-A. So That's the only time I ever want it. So you'll have to have the Chick-fil-A. You'll have to go get Cat. Um, uh, did you see Blue Umbrella, the Disney short? No. Nah, it's, a t- it's from 2013. You probably weren't even born yet. Um, I wasn't the Morton Salt girl who carries an umbrella because I think I was her before. You were. We had a whole topic on it. Yeah. So therefore, uh, that's why I was Neo. Um, and, and as we know, it's unlucky to open an umbrella in the house. Yes. But when I looked it up, it's not really clear why. I don't know. I think maybe like I feel like a lot of these like superstitions is just don't do that. You're getting water everywhere. Yeah, don't, yeah. <laughs> you know, like don't walk under a, a ladder. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like not safe. Right. Don't break glass. It's, it's seven years by lo- or a mirror. Nobody wants our mirror broken, especially back in the day when mirrors are expensive. And you know, gla- bre- breaking glass. Two things you never want to drop on the ground. Let me just let me just give a little tip. A little PSA. <laughs> a little PSA to the people. With all your years of knowledge. Yes. Uh, glass and bleach. Or blood. <laughs> yeah, well. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you kill someone with glass and you get blood on the ground, you're going to have to use the bleach. But 
Oh my god. <laughs> this is a Christian podcast. What in I'm case saying you is forgot. glass is the absolute worst because the tiny little pieces fly so very far and so much later you walk and you could be cut with it. Yeah. It's very awful. And bleach? Ugh. Forget about it. It just go the little splatters. I guess water and every, all the splatters go far, but the bleach, you know, it bleaches things. So yeah, end up with white. My stuff. bleacher cat. Right. The umbra, umbraculum. The umbra umbraculum. What? <laughs> the umbraculum is the big umbrella, and it's the historic piece of the Pope's accoutrements that um, it used to keep shade off him. Umbrellas were made for shade, you know, not for water. Was that why they were made, or is that just part of their use? That was the original. Umbrella means shade. Oh, it's the original use. It's the original use. Wow, I could see that. Like Victorian yeah. women walking around Or even their further, umbrella. like nah. out in the fields and stuff. Who's out in the fields with an umbrella? If you're out in the fields, you're a worker. I'm thinking Victorian, <laughs> when you first started getting people of wealth, and at the time, all the, the bronze skin muscle men were out there, and that was seen as like, Oh, you're so muscular and tan. That must mean because you work all day. Right. And then if you were a, a, a woman born to a Even wealthy... Even men. The men used to powder their faces, yeah, didn't women they? women or men who are born in wealthy societies. Mm-hmm. Like, the thought of a tan would mean that they were out in the sun oh, where it's poor like... Or you. You're outside all day. Yeah, I belong in a castle. So, I, I could see that. Um. So, it's the Pope's umbrella. So, what's it called? The umbrucalum. Yeah, that's very good. Um, and whenever the, the they still have them in the in different basilicas, and when the Pope visits, they open the umbrella comes, and then you know that he's I'm here. He's, <laughs> he's on he's on deck. Um, do you know any songs that use the word umbrella? Um, yeah, Rihanna. Shout out her. She's pregnant. She is with uh, ASAP Rocky's child, and Drake. Uh, unfollowed them both on Instagram. Oh, yeah. he's just being funny. Little sad boy. No, probably a little. Sad I saw his it. little, little, his little actual boy. Yeah. Um, <sighs> speaking French with this big blonde curls, so cute. Um, and she's your Caribbean sister, Rihanna. She is my Caribbean queen. Um, the song because there's something called Rihanna's Curse. Speaking of unlucky umbrellas. Rihanna's curse when the song came out all those years ago um and when it was when it got to number one in the United Kingdom they had like torrential uh, oh, really? a, a spate of very bad <laughs> uh, rainy weather so they made like a funny joke you know the the newspaper I think and was like Rihanna's curse the song keeps playing and the rain <laughs> keeps falling so then it happened in What's New Zealand it happened in New Zealand it happened in Romania and it happened um somewhere else um yeah somewhere else but literally, it was happening in these countries. I don't know if she just it came out at that the, the wet, wet was it yeah, rainy, season? rainy season. But it would come out, and when it would go to the top of the charts, the rain um would be, would be like mudslides and everything. And then as it would come off number one, the weather would get better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's called rain. She it's got called, that calypso juju. I was going to call her Raina. That voodoo doo doo. Rihanna. Her curse. Um and. At the time, Def Jam's marketing team collaborated with Totes, which is a very famous umbrella, um, and brought out the Rihanna umbrellas, a particular. Um, she's worth like a billion dollars, I believe. Yeah, something like that. She's done everything. Well, anywho, guys, that's enough about Rihanna. So you don't, want, you don't want to talk about pulses, but you did talk about umbrellas. So yeah, half points for you. I like umbrellas. I, I never have an umbrella when I need it, and I... I think that's why I like the idea of it being in a fancy car. Because there's so there's very few times. I probably count on one hand the amount of times I went into rain with an umbrella. Yeah. It's a game changer. Like you must forget. It's like you can walk around in the rain without getting wet. Right. It's like I'm used to just running to my car and then wherever I get full sprinting in and then w- wicking off the wet water yeah. from yeah. my body. And so umbrellas are underrated. I think. Remember, I wanted to have an umbrella shop. You did. I wanted to have a strictly umbrella store, complete all umbrellas all the time. New invention umbrellas, the umbrellas that closed, closed, they closed down. You know when your umbrella closes? That seems super not. Yeah, it was like an invention. I, I, doesn't seem like it makes sense. It makes sense because. It seems longer. No, it was something good about it being closed. What was it? Oh, you know, it's probably the wetness. 
Yeah, I guess. The wetness. Because when you close an umbrella, like it goes all in your hand. Yeah, maybe that was it. I don't know. But I wanted to have all types of umbrellas, sun umbrellas, parasol, and umbrella, umbrella. And um, it, it didn't happen yet, but. Oh, you know, they say could have, would have, should have. Life is young. Life is old. Our spirits are young. But guys, that's. <gasps> One more thing. Okay. I'm so sorry. Um, I do. Yesterday, we lost our friend, um, a YouTube friend. But today, I lost. We lost. Everybody lost a, a wonderful friend and neighbor and um, my friend's mother, um, Joanne Costanzo. And um, she had been struggling for a little bit, but she has gone to heaven to be with her husband. And I'm praying for um, her family. Like we talked about yesterday, the family left behind. Prayers to her family and our condolences. So today is Thursday, guys. As you know, we have a little segment on Thursday that is called Walk Through Thursday. And before we talk about what it is, we're going to roll into the intro. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz Walk Through Wednesday just begun. All right, guys, you know what it is. It is Walk Through Thursday, my favorite day of the week every week mm -hmm. um what we do on walk through thursday is we open up the bible the bible is open and we pick a verse from a book in the bible and we talk about it yeah we slow it down we really slow it down mm -hmm. we try to get little, little little nuggets of of knowledge through each word and slowly but surely we find spiritual significance all throughout the bible mm -hmm. like when you're eating something and there's something in it you know what I mean? No. Well, we're going to walk through it. We're going to go sentence by sentence, line by line, word by word, and try to get a deeper meaning. And when you're hearing the magical words we're saying, you might get a different meaning, and that's okay, because that's the meaning that is meant for you to hear. The Bible is for you. It's for me. It's for you. Don't let any person say, the Bible is for me, and I'll tell you about it. Oh, yeah. The Bible's for you. Personal. It's like a little... uh little personal letter, a little personal, personal book, assistant. Personal assistant. It's like that old paper clip. Oh, the helper. Clippy. Clippy. I don't know if that was his name, but. Should be. <laughs> so with that being said, the book we're reading from today is I'm Not Sure. Oh, we're starting at the beginning. Genesis. Let's start at Genesis. Start at Genesis. Why not? Where it all began. But this is far into Genesis. Oh, okay. So a lot of things have happened. Gen <laughs> For those of you who don't know, you know, you might not read the Bible, but you know Bible stories, you are up to date in biblical text. Genesis, you get through the book of Genesis and you're like, wow, I just read a lot of the Bible stories I knew as a kid. Oh, uh, okay. You know what I mean? And it's the first book of the Bible. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's like, when I read the Bible, I, I, I'm like, oh, wow. Because the Bible is huge. Right. And some of the stories that... You've seen, might have seen whole movies about, like uh, the Disney version of, of Joseph. Yes. And uh, you're like, well, so, you know, and or Adam and Eve or Moses, you know, the or the, um, not Moses, I meant to say. Abraham. Noah. Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark. And, so, and then you're reading the Bible and you're like, I'm going through the first book. How did I get, how did I knock through that many Right. Okay. Really? All know. right. So that's why there's so many books too. So, so many chapters. We're reading Genesis 50, 18 to 21. And I know I just spoke about Joseph in the coat of many colors, but this is from that story. Any other context or you want to just do it after? Yes, do it. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. I am in the place of God. Oh, am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. So would you like to give us some context? Of sure. This? Sure. Joseph um, had a whole bunch of brothers and um, they didn't like him because he was the father's favorite. So they um, did all sorts of things to try to lose him in the woods and um, whatnot. Pretend he was dead. I think they eventually sold him into slavery. 
They came home without him. They told the dad, oh, Joseph's dead. So can we not talk about him anymore? And then maybe we can get gifts and attention. Yes. Life went on. Joseph has a story that went on where he went. He, he obviously was sold into slavery, but he came back up and he was. Goes um, to Egypt, becomes one of the most high ranking officials in Egypt. Yeah, succeeded. And, which coincided with a famine that was happening all around the nations. And so everyone got poor and hungry. Mm. Including those brothers. Including the brothers. Including the brothers that were left behind. So there was a famine. And whilst the brothers were in the famine, they said, Let, we, need, we should go to Egypt because the Egyptian officials were helping some people in need. And when they went, Joseph recognized them, but they didn't recognize Joseph. Mm. And so he asked, he said, go bring back your younger brother. Something like that. I'm a little fuzzy on all the details. Long story short, they eventually find out that that is their brother. And they are like, oh, we, you're the one we dropped into a hole. Fast forward, they come back. Their father passes away, um, Jacob. And he gives Joseph one last wish. And then the brothers are now guilt ridden. Being like, now is Joseph's time to finally get revenge for what we did to him. And so... Yeah. And like, not just guilt-ridden, but, but fearful. Because, fearful, yeah. Because reasonably, there will be payback. Yeah. Or if not even... If not like a punishment, at least not, I don't owe you anything. Like... Yeah. Oh, it would just think, be yeah. nice for me not to kill you. Yes. That would be... <laughs> that would be a mercy. Right. Which is in the line where we say, they threw themselves down before him and said, we are your slaves. Okay. And it was like... like Please just just take us as your slaves. Right. We're yeah. We're we're hoping that right. What you just said. We're hoping that at the very at, that's all we can expect at, as a mercy is that we could. So let's walk through it. So I mean, since we his brothers then came and threw themselves. So that's what we were just saying. Okay. That's the first line. We are your slaves, and that's what we were just saying. How they're like, is he's he's going to be mad? Right. And rightfully so. Right. And so take us as your slaves. Uh, sorry. So the next line goes, but Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? So he's saying, I wouldn't judge you because only God can judge. Yes. But yeah, exactly. It, it's don't I, am I in the place of God? It, it, he's saying in a way we're equals. Like, right. He, he's saying, I have no authority to judge you guys. Right. Um, and next, you intended to harm me, but God intended for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So this is where we can, we can start talking about, right? Okay. Because I think this is an important concept that's very hard to do in practice, which is not like... I think in a way, it's, it's, it's in what we always say, lean not on your own understanding. Right. And he's retroactively being like, I didn't understand at the time. And even if I was upset, there was a reason, like like not even a reason. It's God had a, a plan for me. Right. And that's how it unfolded. That's how, that's how the plan unfolded. And now... I'm I'm able to say like, I'm able to save right. many lives, including the brothers. Right. If you think about it, the whole family could have starved. Right. Had they had that not happened. Right. And then, but you get you know this fine line between. Oh, so should we just go in through life being like, I can punch him in the face because you know what that'll probably set him on a on a path that God wants him on. Right. No, but I I think it's more important to look at it from Joseph's side. Right. And not hold on to grudges because that doesn't help anything and. and all your struggles make you stronger in a way. Yeah. And if you see it like that, you you live a less burdened life. If, if he lived on like carrying the burden of what happened to him, yes, he wouldn't be able to thrive in the future and end up helping others. Right. I agree with you. Um, I say right for myself. I can't say right for other people. I'm saying right for myself because it sounds right to me. Um, he, Joseph is choosing to focus on where he is now yes so he's not focusing um 
number one, he, he he's not take he doesn't want to take the place of God at all. So like he's not saying I forgive you of every you know that you put people in holes and you sold them into slavery. He, that's not my place. So we're not even going to deal with that. Yeah, that's yeah. that one. Because yeah, it it, it 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 isn't it is where he is now. He's living in the present. He's and living in the present. So whole grudges are are past tense because he doesn't say. Ah, uh, you guys, you guys never did anything wrong. It right. was all part of God's plan. He said, "You intended to harm me." But right. God, oh yeah, you're but, right. That is something to think about. You intended to harm me, but God intended me to, to um, for ten, intended yeah. it for good. You know what? That's interesting because I was um not paying attention to the "you intended to harm me" part, and I like that because it's not he's not um forgiving them because he's naive, or yes. that he's like. Oh, I'm like, just excited to have my brother's back. Well, you just said, you know, like, um, no, you didn't mean to push me in the hole yeah. or whatever. He's saying, y- I'm fully aware that you intended to harm me, but you, I'm not yeah. going to focus on that because something else was going on. Yes. God intended for me to do good. So I'm going to focus on that because that came to tr- came to be true. Yeah. And I love what God's done with me. So it doesn't it doesn't matter to me how I got here yeah. it might matter to God, but that's between you and God. Yeah, and, and, and it's putting all the power in God and not the power in their actions. Right. It's like, I, I, I focus on one thing. That's what God intends. You know, I, I'm not going to judge you for what you intended, right. even, even if it's bad. It's only about what God wants from me. Right. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. And I think that that you know, do not be afraid is like a big thing because it's like. He's not, he doesn't even want them to walk around still being like, what if he changes right. his mind? Like, right. He's trying to like reassure them that like quite literally like, listen, I am, I'm not one to judge and right. I'm not going to judge you. In fact, I will help you because that is what my, that is what I'm intended to do. Right. And, and no matter what you chose, don't go forward in that. And it, 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 it's that, it's that love, you know, you, like. It's that love through God and that forgiveness that we always hear about in action. Like this is what true forgiveness and love looks like. And it's sometimes the hardest because it's like any normal person could have the thoughts of revenge or right. not even revenge, but the why would I help you? Right. What have you done for me? Yeah, it would be um, an honest uh, reaction yeah. to you know, equal, equal and honest. And it's so interesting this in Genesis because Genesis, I find to be, or even just the thought of it to be, you think of the old fashioned, you know, the oldest, um, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, right? Scripture, which is very much like that. If you do bad, this is going to happen to you. And that is fair. And it's fair because you're going to take the consequences of your actions. Yeah. This is Genesis. He's being so generous. He's saying, I'm not concerned. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of your children. Yeah. That's further. Um, and also like say he reassured them and he spoke kindly to them. So it's not even like, yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's not a superiority or it's not. Yeah. And, and from the beginning we said he like sees them as equals. And to the end, once again, it's not a holier than now. It's right. not, I will take care of you guys yeah. because I'm better than you. It's, right. He, he reassured and spoke kindly. It's like, no, it's like uh, being genuine. It's like, yes. I genuinely, I'm not judging you. Right. I genuinely will take care of you. Yeah, this is, look how Christ-like this is. Yeah. And this is the first book of the Bible. This is the Old Testament. So Christ-like. He was persecuted, but he forgave, mm-hmm. right? And he welcomed them with open arms. He was kind. He was generous. He was reassuring. Um, and I just am very uh, surprised that that was in Genesis. I'm not, because you know what? Who is Jesus? Jesus is God. I know, and- I know. No, it's it's the whole bible it's the whole thing but that's our walk through thursday hope you enjoyed it hope you liked it let us know what you got from it go read it go go read the story why not there's a lot more yeah before and after right. of this one particular story right it's worth the read but we can all try to be more like joseph when people wrong us and just remember up. sorry and just remember <laughs> <laughs> that no matter what you know, happens to us, you know, God has a plan for us and to just keep our faith in that and I not hold grudges. Th- I think it's archived on the, the the sight and sound theater that we went to because Joseph was one of the chosen. Yes. They have they have the older 
I'm pretty sure they have the older shows that you can watch on video. Yes, they do. Check it out. We'll be back tomorrow for Fun Friday. No, Dr. Seuss Friday. Dr. Seuss Friday. Until then, go and, and, and forgive. Peace.